Hello everyone, it's great to see you there. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for joining this adventure. May this be the official chance to welcome you all to this online course, Forces, a journey through adventure. Today we are going to have an introduction about CLIO, Content and Language Integrated Learning. Let's see what it is about. But before that, we need to mention that the book that we took into account in order to provide you with a lot of details is Uncovering Clio. This is a very reliable reference and it's really, really meaningful when it comes to implementing a Clio project in any school. If you are interested in finding information about Clio in Spanish, uh, the way to find it is AICLO. It stands for Aprendizaje Integrado de Contenidos y de Lenguas Extranjeras. Whenever we talk about Clio, we really need to make sure that we mention Dr. Do Coyle. She's a professor at the University of Aberdeen and she's been doing a lot of research and a lot of work for a number of years in terms of content and language integrated learning. Whenever we are asked the question, what is Kale? We have to make sure that the answer is a dual focused approach. It is a dual focused approach because now as English or as language teachers, we are expanding our possibilities and we are expanding our point of view. Now we regard the linguistic, the linguistic process, the communicative skills, yeah, but not only that, we also regard understanding of different topics. These topics can be related to any areas, such as biology, chemistry, science, social science, uh, history, geography, and all of this teaching and learning process is done in a foreign language, in a language that is different from our mother tongue, different from our first language. In our case, that's English. We also need to be clear on this. Clear is not a methodology. Clear is not a procedure because it doesn't give you different steps to follow in a class and it doesn't tell you how to structure your lessons. It is not about lesson plans, not about specific teaching techniques. It can be related to a number of techniques that are coherent with this approach, with this educational view, but clearly it's not necessarily a methodology. And especially, it is not a language teaching methodology. In terms of the academic background that supports CLIO, there is a number of pedagogical streams that have played a role on CLIO. We have to mention the socio-cultural and constructivist perspectives of learning. CLIO is related to any socio-cultural or any constructivist point of view, methodology, teaching technique, uh, whatever you would like to call it. And here the main authors are Brunner, Piaget and Vygotsky. Especially because <clears throat> we cannot conceive language learning or any kind of learning without social interaction. Also, Clio is related to Gardner's multiple intelligence theory because we need to make sure that we provide students with multiple opportunities for them to show that they are understanding. Multiple ways, multiple possibilities. Clio stands or Clio supports learner autonomy, language awareness, and of course, language learning strategies. Those little tips that we give to students and also that we help students to discover by themselves in order to learn better. So Clio is about finding ways of how to raise levels of curricular relevance, and not only that, also motivation and involvement of learners in their education. So here is when we say that Clio supports an active role on the students and not really the passive listeners who are going to sit down and to only listen to the lecture that the teacher has to give in that lesson. So Clio is a mixture and Clio is a, is a way to take the best out of two worlds, language learning and content learning. And here is where we have to say that there is a strong connection between them. We, when we talk, we talk about something, there is content. We cannot talk about just anything. It cannot be empty, right? So language learning and content learning have found a way to integrate themselves and to find a lot of benefits for our students. 
So language learning is the missing piece that content learning was needing. And content learning is the missing piece that language learning was needing. In that sense, they complement each other and they are the best of two worlds. Now we have an interesting comic about teaching, about education. Let's have a look at it. What do you see? Let's also take some seconds to read the, the speech bubble and let's have a look at all of the elements in the cartoon. So as we see there is a teacher and he has a coin in his hand. The coin says knowledge and he's going to deposit such a coin in all of his students. He's also saying, hmm, I don't believe you possess the capacity for my vast knowledge. And this is exactly what Cleo doesn't support. Cleo does not support a banking model of education. We cannot think that our students are empty vessels and that our students don't know anything about the topic that we are going to deal with in our lesson. It is highly important that we elicit all of what they know about that, all of what they might have heard, and also all of their previous experiences that probably are related to the topic that we are going to cover. So, no, no banking model of education. Because just like Paulo Freire states it, it is not surprising that the banking concept, concept of education regards men as adaptable, manageable beings. If we keep on implementing a banking model of education, we are, we are not helping our students to break free and to be autonomous. We need to empower them so that they have an active role in their learning processes and also so that they become competent at the end of the day. What does CLIL support? CLIL actually does support constructivism. Because just like Lev Vygotsky state, stated it, through others we become ourselves. And this is when we mentioned that we have a lot of we have a lot to thank to our classmates, to our partners, to our peers, and actually to any human being that has given us a hand and also that has served as a model to be followed. Because thanks to social interaction, is that we actually become better and we overcome our own obstacles so constructivism is the key also it's very important to just like we have just mentioned it's very important to take into account that everything that we probably knew before about a topic plays a key role in our learning process when we related it to the new new ideas that we are being exposed to And here it's very important to mention this concept, scaffolding. Had you ever heard it before? Probably, probably, because it is not totally new. It is also related to Vygotsky's theory of zone of proximal development, and it only takes one thing, somebody who can help me, somebody who is more expert than I am and who can give me a hand in order for me to be better than myself by reaching a higher stage, by giving a step further. So, I am in a point in which I know what I can do, but I know that I can do more than that if I receive some help by somebody who knows a little more than I do. And little by little, I expand my possibilities and I am able to do and to achieve more, more and more concrete results. Now, we are going to see a number of images, and there is a concept that is being represented in such images. So, try to take a guess. What is the concept that is being represented in all of these images? What do they have in common? Mm -hmm. All right. Any ideas? What's the concept beyond? Social interaction. If we are to sum it up and to wrap up this main idea, 
we really have to say that thanks to social interaction we are able to communicate and we are able also to understand and to go to reach deeper understanding about a number of topics so social interaction is also the key and now that we mentioned scaffolding and all of the help all of the strategies that teachers implement in order for us to learn better and to reach our our next stage our further step we also have to mention that this help that we give to students have to decrease as time goes by because just like when we were toddlers when we were little when we were very young learners our parents helped us and they gave us a hand when we needed to learn how to walk but now do they help us walk again do they still help us no not really in this sense we need to develop autonomy so that students need us less and less okay and now that we have reached this point it's very and it's highly relevant to ask ourselves the following question what tips do you give your students to help them learn better are these tips really related only to learning or they can also be related to communicating can they also be related to probably understanding? Of course. So what are what are those strategies that we use as teachers in order for us to give a hand to the students in order for them to be able to understand better, communicate better, and understand better? As time goes by, the idea is that we increase the level of difficulty, that we increase the number of challenges and the number of missions that are demanding for them to accomplish. Also, the idea is that they increase their level of autonomy. The idea is that students, as time goes by, are more and more autonomous. How do we do that? By decreasing the level of scaffolding, decreasing the level of help that we are providing the students with in our lessons. What is all of that? This is a constructivist responsibility but that is not the end we also have a cognition related responsibility and this is when we need to ask ourselves oh in our english lessons what topics are our students learning about are such topics relevant challenging and useful well if we have relevant topics and if they are on if they are developing understanding on a wide range of areas and topics we really need to make sure that we don't include these kind of exercises like filling in the blanks or memorizing lists of verbs they are not really understanding or communication oriented they are more related to memory skills and do we i mean do we really need them when we actually face real life and we when we are really asked to communicate not exactly because that's not the that's not the end that's not the main purpose we need to be able to put all of this into real practice put all of the grammar put all of our vocabulary all of the grammar tenses to be able to solve a situation and to actually get through in any communicative situation outside the classroom in real life so the idea is that our English lessons and according to Cleo there is a number of missions to be achieved through interaction right because what is the purpose of a mission in a mission students get ready right there is a sense of beginning they get excited about a goal to be accomplished there is a sense of effort there's also a sense of cooperation, right? There needs to be help that they give a hand to each other whenever they need it. And there is a sense of accomplishment. When we have these four senses, sense of beginning, sense of effort, a sense of cooperation, and a sense of accomplishment, we are providing students with a learning environment in which all of their actions are more and more meaningful. And also, learning scenarios in which they are able 
to put all of what they know and all of what they can do into real practice. Okay, so we really need to make sure that we reflect upon the kind of activities and the kind of exercises that we are providing our students with. Let's reflect upon that. What kind of activities are we uh, proposing in our lessons? Are they closed-ended, in which they only have one possible answer, or are they open-ended activities? What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? The pros? The cons? What are the positive aspects and what are the negative ones? If we only regard the, this kind of activities, closed-ended activities, we are aiming at a kind of education in which students are just memorizing, right? There is not processing of that information, it's just storing information, but not really processing it. Whereas in this other possibility, open-ended activities, students have the chance to create, to propose, to share, mm -hmm. and they are, there are multiple possible answers. So this is more cognitively stimulating for their minds, right? It's very important that all in all, students are cognitively engaged in the learning process and also cognitively challenged. This takes us to the next concept, which is metacognition. And metacognition is a very, very interesting, a little abstract, but very relevant and meaningful concept to think about when we are talking about CLIL and also when we are talking about pedagogy, generally speaking. How would you define metacognition? Take some seconds. How would you define it with your own words? Yes, yeah, so metacognition refers to those thinking skills that students develop or that any person develops about their own thinking skills. It's a process of consciousness and it's a process of raising awareness, right? So how much are we doing that with our students? Do we lead the teaching process in a way in which students are raising awareness on how they learn? This is why we have a brain that is thinking about the brain, yeah? That is thinking about itself. So it's, a, it's an abstract process, but it's very relevant when it comes to learning. Because metacognition has a link with freedom, right? When I am more aware, when I am conscious about how my mind works or how the way I am learning, I am able to make wise decisions upon my own learning process. So, so this is why we have stated that metacognition has a close relationship with freedom of mind. That's actually the, the big goal to be achieved. And now that we have reached this point, it's very important to mention that we need a thinking syllabus. Let's think about the syllabus that we have our, in our institution, at our school, especially the English syllabus, because we need to connect all of the language that students are learning to the wide range of topics about which students are going to learn and to talk throughout the whole year. And also we need to link all of those to the cognitive process or the thinking skills that students are going to be developing throughout the year as well. All in all, here are the four C's. There is communication, content, culture, and cognition. To be honest, the order doesn't really matter, and they are all as important. What is successful CLIL? For CLIL to be successful, we need progression in knowledge. There needs to be a good amount of topics about which students are going to learn, and they have to be related to different areas, such as history, biology, geography, it doesn't always have to be about English itself or about grammar, but as we said before, we are expanding our possibilities, we are expanding also knowledge. So there needs to be progression in knowledge, skills, and also understanding of the topic or the content. There needs to be engagement in associated cognitive processing, and this means 
that we need to develop a wise number of thinking skills. There needs to be interaction in the communicative context because as we said before, social interaction plays a very meaningful role when it comes to learning and more when it comes to language learning. And also Successful Creole is about developing appropriate language knowledge and also developing language skills. We cannot leave aside the fact that we need our students to have a, a proficient level in a language and we need to work explicitly on that. But it cannot be all about grammar and it cannot be all about language. There needs to be understanding of different topics. And Successful Creole, last but not least, is and implies deepening into intercultural awareness, positioning well ourselves and other people. All right, and now in terms of our Bethlehemite Schools project, this is a template of a map that we are using in order to include it in the syllabus, and this sums up all of the four C's. As we see, there is culture, there is communication, there is cognition and there is content. This is a map that we are including at the end of every term of the plan of every term. So if the school has four terms in a year, so there are four maps just like this one uh, throughout the year. So it's one map per term. As you can see, the only category that has more subcategories is communication. It has language of learning, language for learning, and last but not least, language through learning. But do not worry about them because we are going to go deeper into them a little bit later on. Some interesting facts about Clio. Did you know that in Canada, the, of course, the language in which they implement a Clio project is usually French? Yeah, it's a bilingual country. It's an English-speaking country and also a French-speaking country. So those are the most common languages in which they implement a clear project. The most promoted languages in the UK in order to implement a clear project are French, German, and Spanish. Isn't that interesting? So to sum up, CLIO is challenge, but it's also opportunity. Clear is also about implementing new techniques and Clio is about exploring, Clio is about staying up to date, and Clio really regards five big components. Syllabus, methodology, assessment, resources, and motivation. But we need to be more specific than that, right? So we need a thinking syllabus, we need a learner-centered methodology, we need unpredictable and ongoing assessment, and we need to use resources in a wise way, they need to be varied, and of course we need to have stable and patient motivation, not only on the students, but also ourselves, teachers. This is exactly what we do in the project, in the Petlemite Schools project. In the first year we only focus on syllabus work, then we only focus on our teaching practice, that means methodology. And from the third year on, we start focusing and considering different theoretical considerations related to assessment. Clio has a good number of contributions that we can take into account and from which we can benefit not only in our Bethlehemite educational community, but also wherever we go. Thank you so much for your attention and let's explore the first of our seats, content. See you there.